usually an author's own story isn't nearly as dramatic as the plot he or she devises for us to read. But Curious George's adventures, you know, that's that little monkey, in case you've forgotten, well, were really pretty tame, like flying a kite or learning the alphabet. Meanwhile, the couple who created one of the world's best-loved characters survived some terrifying times, and what they went through and how they became a huge publishing, publishing success is the subject of Curious George, the story of George's curious creators. We'll introduce you to the documentary's director in just a moment, but first, here's a look at the film. This is George. He was a good little monkey, but he was always curious. Everybody thinks Curious George is such an American icon, and of course he is. But he was created by German Jews who lived in Paris, took him through Brazil, and then brought him to the United States. So he's as much of an immigrant as anyone. Margaret was the mischievous one, and Hans was the curious one. So maybe that's how Curious George came to be. We don't have children. And, but you have uh, Curious George instead. But, uh, yes, it is sort of a child, and it's one of the children who take care of their parents. Uh, we are in the monkey business, you might say. Mr. Ray would ask us questions. Do you think George would do this? The idea that I could watch him magically create Curious George was very special. We did only what we liked. And, and by a, a nice coincidence, the children liked the same thing. Did you talk to children? No. Why should we? We couldn't learn anything from them. Tell us about your background. I knew her when she was a child. Uh, at her father's house, she came sliding down the banisters. That's how I met her. <laughs> Hunts would say, in this household, I'm responsible for the big decisions. Margaret's responsible for all the little decisions. Let that be known. There have been no big decisions since we've been married. We're living in France when we did the first Curious George. George was really born in France. The Rays had to leave Paris suddenly in June of 1940, along with five million other people fleeing as the German army came into Paris. Margaret said to Hans, go get two bicycles. But by that time, the only thing that was for sale was a tandem. Hans is a genius. He could do anything. By the time they fled Paris, George was a finished product. Somehow they had found out that we were born in Germany. From that moment on, we were spies. I'm pretty damn sure it was George who saved us there. There are George's adventures. But then there are the Ray's adventures. George, we hardly knew ye. Such a packed story there. Well, Emma Ryan Yamazaki is the producer, director, and editor of the Curious George documentary. And fresh off a very successful Kickstarter campaign, she joins us right now in the studio. Welcome, Emma. Hi, thank you. So how'd you get into the monkey business? Um, I really just heard about their story. Um, a mutual friend introduced me to the woman that now runs the Curious George estate, the Ray estate. Okay. And um, when I, I, I grew up in Japan actually reading the Curious George books, but never had asked anyone like who wrote these books. And yeah. when I found out they were German Jews or fled the Nazis on bicycles. You know, you don't you don't kind of say, okay, you know, move on, right? right. You kind of look into like, it. And oh. I Googled many times to see if a film had already been made, and when I hadn't, it just seemed like as a filmmaker looking to make a film, it, I just had to pursue it, yeah. How do you say Curious George in Japanese? He's called Osaru no Joji. Osaru no Joji. Joji is the same, Osaru is monkey. So. Okay, mm. so he's monkey George yes. over there. Yeah. Very important to keep that separated. So you went down this rabbit hole, or maybe a monkey hole, I don't know, you went down the rabbit hole and found out all of these things, but 
both of the protagonists in your story have long since passed away. Right, yeah, Hans died in 77 and Margaret in 1996, so I was either not alive or very little by the time they were both gone, and that was a challenge to figure out how to tell their story when they're long gone, and actually there are some archival materials like of them speaking, but not so much, and um, that's really when I turned to things like animation I could basically create to, you know, things that didn't exist based on stories and people who knew them, and I interviewed a lot of them as well. So what was the spark that you found there from that archival stuff or digging into their lives that made you say, because it's an interesting story on paper, but if they were flat or it didn't really go anywhere, or there was no harrowing bicycle breakdown, we're going to bike away from the Nazis, you wouldn't have had much of a movie here. Right, yeah, I think it was first, you know, the first time I heard them speak, you know, in the trailer you, you heard a little bit, but it was, again, so unexpected, you know, yeah. I don't think people assumed there were, there were this just Germ you know, such strong German accents and they yeah. were immigrants to America. Yeah. Um, and then also, the more I learned about the very story, it was impossible to separate it out of what they created, Curious George. So actually learning about the Rays and Hans, you know, you could see how the, the creator's creation kind of you know, paralleled each other. So yeah. that's what really got me into it. And there was a moment there where someone who knew them said, okay, she was the mischievous one and he was curious. And for all intents and purposes, Curious George was their child. Definitely, definitely. I mean, they say so themselves, and I think um, it was a true creation, it was a true partnership. You know, he drew the images, she wrote the words, but really it was all in collaboration, and I don't think, you know, just having one of them wouldn't have, you know, been able to create this, so yeah. definitely it was their child. And they didn't have any kids of their own, actually, so yeah. George was their only child. Looking again at the trailer, there was this great way that you blended the style of the artwork that's so iconic and recognized to us from the books and wove it into the story with the archival footage as well as making their photographs come alive. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely a mixed media documentary. So the goal here is to use animation to tell the story how they, they told it. You know, they look back on their wartime escape as there was an adventure, whereas we know from the millions of other people on those roads that it, it wasn't, right? And so yeah. the archival footage shows the reality and then mixing it up with trying to show kind of the extraordinary perspective the Rays had or chose to, how, how they chose to remember it later is a, definitely what we explore. So how was it working with animators on this film? That's sort of a a departure for you. You've had some very heavy, substantive, social issue film work that you've done, and now you have this whimsical, yeah. colorful thing. Yeah, and I think the great thing about filmmaking, right? Like here, I'm making this animated film. I can't draw, you know, stick <laughs> stick figures to save my life, right? right? And I, I found this, you know, I, I picked you know Jacob Kafka, this this lead animator, a couple of years ago. I've been working at it you now, so I'll have ideas. He'll have ideas. It is up to him and his team to kind of make it happen. And in a way, maybe because because I don't fully understand how much work it is, you know, Still I can magic. kind of, yeah, yeah, sometimes, you know, I say, you know, I want that change. Make you know, it do that's, this. That's going to take three days, and I don't, <laughs> I don't understand, but, you know, we really, it's a, it's a real collaboration between Jacob and I as well, and in a way, I think, although we're, you know, babies, storytellers yeah. compared to the ways, like, we do see this kind of, like, partnership, you know, I'm like the, right. the go-getter, and he's, like, very creative, yeah. and uh, he, you know, we, we're really working together on this. So you came off a pretty epic Kickstarter campaign that just closed up in July? It started in July, started ended in July. Uh, August, so just okay. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, but you guys, people, apparently the world has been waiting for this movie. It was really successful. Yeah, well, we raised over $186,000. Yowza! By, you know, and that's just, you know, our goal was 175, so we had to get there to get right. any funds, but, um, yeah, it was the most intense experience I've ever had, probably way more than making a movie. Really? But like, you know, for us, I've been doing this for over two years mm -hmm. and kind of quietly with a small group of people and to right. kind of make it public and realize again the, the power of this story and how mm -hmm. people are interested. And um, it, it was reassuring, you know, now I know lots of people want to see the film. Yeah. And just finishing it right now. That's basically. a lot of bananas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that did give you a little, you know, a little puff up inside to feel like people really supported this and they're waiting for your film. Yeah, yeah, I just feel like, like extra responsibility to do, just do a really, really good job, you know, with all the decisions. And we're really in like the final crunch time to kind of make these creative decisions and the execution is going to take so long with the animation yeah. and everything, but now is the time that and I just want to make sure that each thing, you know, we've thought it out and because so many people 
people are waiting and yeah, um, yeah I feel like I, I can't believe I'm the one telling this story and yeah. I do feel like very fortunate and trying to do a really good job. I sense big things coming for you. So Thank aside you. from this nostalgic just tied that a lot of us feel to that curious little monkey and that guy in the yellow hat, what do you think want people to take away from after they see the film and the story. Yeah, I think I think we like everybody could just, you know, benefit from a little raise in their life. Like they're just so in, such inspiring people who again like kind of took life with stride and like the creation, the monkey they made, they were so creative, so resilient. Yeah. And just had a good attitude about things. And you know, I've talked to so many people who knew them and mm -hmm. they kind of had the same same story and I think it's just a good way to approach life and maybe we can all learn a little bit from that for sure. Very cool. A Brazilian monkey with a couple of immigrant Jews who were fleeing war. This is an American story if ever there was one. Yeah. Told by a Japanese English woman. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm also, yes, exactly. So. Good. That's what we need. Sounds like Brooklyn to me. Well, thank you so much for being here. How can we keep updated on the progress that you're making with the Curious George documentary? Um, there is a website, CuriousJourgeDocumentary.com, um, where, you know, which, and there's a Facebook page and also the social media as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. We Thank look forward you. to your film. Thank you so much. Good luck with that.